And here we go from Vandalia Butler High School. It is the regional final between Fort Lormie and Tri-Village. And just like that, wow. Fort Lormie getting into the scoring quickly. Darren Gilbert. Took about eight seconds, didn't it, to break the thing off the tip and finish at the rim. What a nice finish right there by Ava Turner. Turner with the first buckets of the night. And Tri-Village trying to answer, going up strong. Can't get it controlled there is Morgan Hunt. And back the other way come Fort Lormie. Nice lead pass, strong contact underneath, and Heidi Bell will hit. I'm sorry, that's going to be number 30, Jaden Rose, heading to the foul line. Yeah, that was off a, a thread the needle pass there by Ava Turner. She took the ball off the boards, broke it down the center of the lane, threw a nice pass right there, going to get two free throws. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here from Vandalia Butler High School, this Division IV Vandalia Regional Final. We are off to a quick start. First bucket. No good there by Jaden Rose, the junior. Coming in at 60% at the charity strike. Young lady's been there 53 times, converted 32. And second one is missed, gonna be tipped out and will belong to Tri-Village. The Patriots of Tri-Village coming into this contest 27 and 0. They've won 49 of their last 50 contests. And you know, when you get to this stage of the season, Darren, they're all good. All the teams are good at this point. All the teams are good. Teams, uh, you know, use their bench. Teams are aggressive. They want to play sort of an up-tempo game and force turnovers with their defense. And we're seeing two teams that do it really well. Sagaster oh, from Raisin Kings oh my knocks goodness. down the three ball. And returning the favor is Fort Lormie. What an answer by Skylar Albers, tickling the twine with a triple. Yeah. And here we go. Lead pass up, missed. It's going to be a track meet. Getting instructions is Rose. She'll control the basketball again, just underway here in the first quarter. Try Village mixing it up a little bit, going to a 2-1-2 matchup quarter court. Driving inside, nice take around the defense and in, Avery Brandewee. Yeah, Brandewee coming in, averaging just under 12 points a game, shooting 48.9% from the field. Now Tri Village with the basketball. Good ball movement. And a little bit of trouble there is now working inside. Nice steal there by Albers. Skyler skies up for it. Now running the floor. And Ava Turner fouled. And I think they got her with the push off with yeah, the they left did. arm. So that'll be the first on Turner and the first team. Yeah, that'll go down as a turnover, unfortunately. Basketball goes back to the Patriots. And Darren, let's take a quick look at what the what kind of keys we're looking at here for a win tonight. Well, let's take a look at Tri-Village. They need to make sure they limit the live ball turnovers. And the reason why, because our uh, girls here from Fort Larmy forces 24 a game. And there's another one. Just like that, and Fort Lormie patrolling the passing lanes. A lead pass gonna be a little bit too strong. Looking for Summer Hoying, who just checked into the basketball game, and it's gonna go back to Tri-Village. Number two, they, they wanna get easy transition baskets, and they gotta make sure they rebound at both ends of the floor. For Fort Lormie, they gotta make sure they contain the big three, which is Slogester, Hunter, and, or excuse me, Hunt and Richards. They got to have the mentality of one and done mentality rebounding the basketball because Fort Lormie is really good on the, or excuse me, Tri Village is really good on the glass. They got to make sure they handle Tri Village pressure. It's almost like a carbon copy of both teams. They feed off of steals and pushing the basketball. Another long three pointer attempted by Sagaster, no good. And the ball will stay down here with Tri Village. And uh, Riley Sagaster, the 5'7'' senior, certainly someone to watch in this contest. Uh, Sagaster, a finalist for Miss Ohio, Miss Basketball in the state of Ohio. Uh, everything that you could possibly accomplish in her conference, she has done. When, when you make 103 threes on the season, that says a lot. 78% at the line, 21 points a game, 106 assists. Three ball is short opportunity and thrown right into the hands of Sagaster after the basket by Hunt and a foul called 
against Fort Loramie. Boy, how smart was she with the basketball right there? She yield, shielded her body against that defender and created that foul. I think that was on Brandon Wing. You are absolutely right. So Avery Brandewee, the sophomore, she picks up her first foul. That's the team's second. And do not expect a lot of downtime. Do not expect a lot of breathing room. So far, these teams want to get out and they want to run. Yeah, there's not one girl out there on the floor huffing and puffing. And they went after it hard for this first four minutes. Kennedy Hager has checked in for Tri-Village and now Sagister up underneath. And Hager aforementioned, she gets the rebound, the bucket does not go. And here comes Fort Loramie. Running on the floor, putting that one up. Nice block by Hunt. And Sagister retrieves the basketball. That's what Hunt does very well. 84 block shots coming in for Tri-Village. Pass looking inside to Hager, she gets it. Works it around, open with Tori Richards for a moment. Now she drives inside off the glass, around the rim and in. Pretty move. Ripped it baseline, finished it with the left hand at the rim. We are tied at seven. 4.14 to go here in the first quarter. And Victoria Mesher thinking about the three-pointer. Instead, she passes it off. Yeah, this is where if you're going to play the matchup zone, you got to do two things well. You got to protect the basketball and not let it down the lane, and also you got to make sure you're rebounding right there. They just got to steal. Sagaster from way downtown. If she keeps hitting more of those, and there's a foul on the floor, if she keeps hitting more of those, we're going to have to talk to the airport in Dayton. We're going to have to get some air clearance let go because she is letting those things fly from Good. way beyond three-point range. Uh, yeah, the volleyball line. Good night. That's two of them. And they, they've been nothing but pure. So some substitutions being made. Turner and Albers will have a seat for Fort Loramie. Looking for a shot there. Good defense by Tri-Village. Ball movement. Working it around here. Oh, nice and cut. Nice cut inside. Getting the scoring going there, Avery Brandewee. Did everything right, side to side through the high post to the baseline and a little roll down the lane. Nice execution there by the ladies of Fort Larming. One point lead. Now the turnover, ball coming in and a uh -oh. foul underneath. And there's an injured Redskin down on the court. She took a really a nasty looking fall. She got tied up with Kennedy Hager. Hopefully it's more of an emotional thing. You know, I think it's one of those that really shook her up. She got her leg tied up underneath. Yeah, it looks like she might have rolled her. They're looking at her left knee, apparently. Yeah. So we'll step away and take a quick timeout with the score 10 to 9 in favor of Tri Village. We'll be back. Welcome back, Avery Brandewee being helped off the court. As we mentioned before the break, she took a nasty fall, got wrapped up with Kennedy Hager and grabbed her left knee, had to be helped off the court. Uh, we certainly hope it's not anything serious and that after you know, maybe some ice and some rest, she'll be back in. Meanwhile, we're back to basketball action and a nice block by Morgan Hunt over for Tri-Village. Boy, she's really long and has great timing on blocking shots. Now the trick for Fort Laramie will be getting back to basketball and it's never great to see a teammate go down, but can they shake it off? That three ball by Turner, no good. Ball loose, corralled by Tri Village. Off and running on the other end, banks it home. Bucket in by Tori Richards. Well, she's quick with the ball too. She gets it and she just pushes it at her own pace and that's full speed. Nice uh, job going to the basket with the basketball and finishing. 12-9 on the Reese Myring and Company scoreboard. Drive Village in favor, coming up on two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Nice move by Turner, but a better steal by Tri Village. And returning the favor is Fort Loramie Hoyan coming in. And I believe, yeah, Coach Carlos Segro gets the timeout. So nice uh, way to come up with a turnover, get the ball back, and then call a timeout. So 30-second timeout 
and we will keep it here. So there is no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it for you. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44, WOSN relies on the donations of viewers just like you to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and clicking the donate button. We we'll continue to get tremendous basketball action that we have been able to bring all season long. And of course, we are in the tournaments now. This is the regional final. We've got regional semifinal and finals action of boys basketball coming up next week. Uh, Darren, strap in. This is going to be a fun it, week. It's going to be a real entertaining week. You know, it's going to be a lot of work for Ben and the broadcasters and you at the station and the cameraman. But you know what? It's the best time of the year. So back to action following the timeout. Fort Lormie with the basketball. Carissa Meyer controlling and losing it and then foul. I think they got Richard. I think what Richards with a push. Richards was nearby. We'll see if that's who it is. I think so. So that's the first on Tory Richards. That is the fourth team foul on Tri-Village. Skylar Albers into the game, repl replacing Carissa Meyer for Fort Army. Ball in. Alex Rose controlling for a moment. Now back to Jaden Rose. Free ball up and away and no good. And a battle underneath, and we're going to have another foul. Wonder if that's Turner. And I think the referee's going to signal Turner. Yep, you're right. Got it with a push. So that's the second foul on Turner. So she will go and have a seat. Ariel Heitkamp, is that correct, number 10? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, number 10, okay. Ariel Heitkamp. She will check in, the 5'5 five five sophomore. And starting to get interesting for Fort Loramie in terms of personnel. Avery Brandewe went out injured earlier in the contest. And now Ava Turner is going to have an early seat with two fouls, so. Yeah, what a big spot for Ariel to be in. I mean, she's played six, uh, four games this year. She's gonna get some big minutes today in the regional final. Turnover now and nice defense there by Summer Hoying. Sure was. Having to go up against Kennedy Hager and looked like it was gonna be an, early, an easy basket for Hager, but she's able to step in there and get it done. It's gonna stay down here, however, with the Patriots. Yeah, that was a good job on the deflection. Sagister inbounds. Now Hunt controlling, in trouble. Nice pass inside, Hager open around. Can't finish, gets the ball back. A little too much under there. Rebound corralled by Hoying. Yeah, she's got to finish those. That's two of them. She's missed, partner, point blank range. And we're going to have a kick. Yeah, if you're Fort Laramie, continue to do what you're going to do. Get the ball going side to side and then get it into your high post. Get it in from angles and then attack. Final 40 seconds of this first quarter. Three-point lead for Tri-Village. Fort Laramie looking to close it to one or tie here in the following moments. Look for the pass inside. It's going to be knocked out of bounds. Looking for Skylar Albers, and instead it's going to stay down here with Fort Loramie, 31 seconds to go in the first. Yeah, Heidkamp did a really nice job looking down there. She may want to take a dribble down there just to improve her passing angle a little bit. The length of this zone presents a lot of problems. Working it around. Heidkamp, shot is long. Rebound by Tri-Village, 18 seconds. Pushing it down the floor is Richards. And he'll give it up. Sagister controlling. Seven seconds. Pass it inside. Hunt has it. Double team looking for Sagister inside. Nice cut inside. Putting that one in. Final seconds. Will they get a shot off? They will not. A terrific first quarter for the Patriots. Tri-Village with a 14-9 lead on the Reese Myring and Company scoreboard. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this on WOSN. Second quarter ready to get started. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. 
Second quarter ready to get started from Butler High School in Vandalia, the Division IV Regional Final, Tri-Village and Fort Loramie. Tri-Village with a five-point lead. Patrick Kamler, Darren Gilbert here with you. And it has been, well, I'm not sure what we specifically expected, but it has been that, Darren. It's been a frantic pace game, hasn't it? Both ends of the floor and lots of deflections. Nice block. Defenses have been picking up huge. Can they convert offense? Fort Loramie going in strong, can't get there. And then again, there's the there's that length of Hunt going vertical. Now Richards controlling for the Patriots will back that off. Sagister cutting inside, losing the basketball into the hands of Heitkamp. Heitkamp running the floor, two on two. Pass going around. Mesher's shot is blocked. Skyler Albert's shot is blocked, rather. Guess who? Miss Hunt. No, no surprise. Morgan oh, Hunt. Yeah. I, I tell you, look down there at Morgan Hunt, Kennedy Hager. You've really got the, you know, the, the, the twin towers oh, of, my goodness. of their uh, their defense right now. And this ball thrown out some miscommunication there, able to corral it and save the possession. Victoria Mesher. And another turnover with numbers. Richards. Nice recovery. Nice, nice block. Sagister to clean it up. Can't put it away. Albers brings the ball up the court. A little over a minute gone by here in the second quarter. Now, driving, cutting nice inside, pass. looking underneath for Hoying. Can't connect Hoying with the miss. Tough break because that was a really nice pass. Meyer just made a little wraparound bounce pass. Sagister controlling. Now working inside for Hunt. Hunt around to Hager. Wide open here is Richards. That is short. Ball poked away and rebounded. Bella Black now looking inside for Hager once again, and that one swatted away by Victoria Mesher. Another good defensive play there by Fort Larmy with another deflection, knocking that ball out of bounds. Pass. Going in and looking back inside. There's Morgan Hunt coming in. Keep the inbounds pass and then snuck behind the defense there for the easy bucket. That little baseline backside screen there. They call out a flex cut. Nice entry pass and finish at the rim. 6-0 run for Tri-Village. 16-9, the Patriots on top. Nice pass inside off the bucket, off the glass and in for Mesher. That's a big basket for Fort Laramie right now because you can tell that the momentum was right now favoring the Patriots. Sagister driving in, can't get there. Fort Laramie crowd wanting a travel and now some miscommunication looking for the basketball. And got it. Mesher controls getting it back around to Rose. Less than five and a half to go in the first half. And a dangerous pass there, looking for number 23, Alex Rosen. She was right there. There were two Patriots that were right next to her. She did a really good job stepping to the basketball. If she doesn't step to the basketball, that's not a foul. That's probably going to be either a jump ball or a steal. Bella Black going to check in for Tri-Village as Kennedy Hager has a seat. I like the composure Fort Laramie is showing right now. You know, they're playing right now without their leading score and they're they're, they're being patient and they're getting good looks. That shot attempt by Carissa Meyer, no good. Here to be Hunt on the rebound for the Patriots. Defense continuing to hold up well for the Redskins. Now here's Hunt. Richards and Sagister getting a little tied up there. Yeah, you're doing good things defensively if you can move that offensive team back to the midline. Oh, there's Yeah, that's going to be an offensive foul. And perhaps a little bit of a Bronx cheer from the Fort Loramie section. Well, the, the coach is a little concerned, but I'm going to tell you what, they switched the screen there. And when you switch that screen, you're giving the defensive an opportunity to get their feet set for that charge. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, Sagastar got trapped in that. Really nowhere you can go once that happens. And 
played very well by Fort Loramie. Now, can the Redskins convert it into some points? That shot looked like it was partially blocked by Tri Village. And now Sagaster brings it up the court. Team comes in averaging six block shots a game due to Patriots. Yeah, I think we're gonna get a five second call. Coach Carlos Siegel making uh, a lot of different substitutions. Ava Turner is going to check back in. So Coach Siegel is going to say, hey, four minutes and 17 seconds, don't get any more fouls. Yeah, just keep, yeah, just keep gutting it out, you know, keep playing, playing within yourself. We're, we're down two possessions. Averaging 9.9 .9 points a game. Really, you, you need her out there for that offense kind of keying it. And there you go. That wasn't her, that was number 22, Skylar Albers, but just having Turner out there, creating some opportunities and a turnover on the other end. Well, it all started with Mesher getting in the lane and dribble driving, then a little kick to the corner. Timeout on the floor. Momentum, Fort Loramie's way, trailing three, 16 to 13. We'll take a timeout and be back here on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and Sydney sponsoring the free throw line tonight. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. 3.56 remaining in the first half, and there hasn't been a ton of scoring in the second quarter, but, man, you, you feel the, the momentum shifting over to Fort Loramie's side, and you think, man, they're on this massive uh, scoring run. Uh, it, it's 4-0. Yeah, it's 4-0, but you know what? It's keeping them in the game, and it's ha they're just hanging around. You know, they're in a position right now where they have not probably sat this long having to play everybody else when Brandewi, you know, has been out of the game. Nice rebound. Nice offensive board. Rare second chance opportunity. They really haven't had a lot of those. That ball and tipped away. A scrum for the basketball, and we'll see what we're going to get here. Trying to see who is on the floor after that. They're going to call jump ball, and it's going to stay with Fort Loramie. Albers. Well, those black uniforms partners, tough to see, aren't they? Numbers. <laughs> yeah, without a doubt. You know, we mentioned that the, the Redskins, the thing they do really well is they hustle, and they're oh. scrappy, and they fight for basketballs, and you're seeing that, and we've seen that all through the first few minutes of this contest. Three ball on the way, no. Tip, rebound, corralled, Morgan Hunt, recipient now to Sagaster. And that's part of the reason why they beefed up their schedule with the likes of OG and Liberty Benton to put themselves in a position to be in games like this. And that ball is gonna be thrown away. Some miscommunication between Sagaster and Hunt and another forced turnover by the Redskins. Really good defense right there, switching out on the screen and almost like they were gonna trap it. They wanted to do a little give and go and just couldn't communicate and get it done. That being the Patriots. Under three minutes to go and for a second there, it looked like Rose was gonna let the three pull go. That's what I was wondering <laughs> too. Long, well, that's gonna be a three, that one's gonna be long and it's gonna go back to Tri-Village. Yeah, I think that was off a of measure. Marissa Meyer checking in for the Redskins. Mesher having a seat. Three-point lead for Tri-Village, 233 remaining in the first half. Sagaster running the offense, and she's going to dribble inside. Scoop shot, seen her try that scoop shot a couple of times. Hasn't really found the range of it just yet, even though she has half of Tri-Village's points tonight. She has eight of their 16. Really good job getting five on ball side. And an errant pass. A little too high for Meyer. And the ball goes back to Tri-Village. Looking inside for Hunt. And Hunt under the basket a little bit too much, but poked away. And another scrum for the basketball. Oh, and Fort Lormy comes up with it. High camp running the floor. A little bit too much on the ball for Summer Hoying. 
Great effort by Meyer getting on the deck, getting that loose ball for Fort Laramie. It looked like Hunt was gonna get it for the Patriots and Miss Meyer said, nope, it's gonna be our basketball. You, you see one of those adjustments that Fort Laramie is trying to make, and to a certain extent, Tri Bill is trying to make on the fly. When you're not used to having so many tall girls to throw over, you have to make changes and those balls, they're going over the hands of the outstretched defenders, but they're just a little bit too long for the for the offense. Well, and I think the adjustment the Patriots are trying to do is with with Fort Laramie denying um, Sagister the basketball on the perimeter, now they're trying to isolate the post play because right now it appears Fort Laramie's worried about Sagister again on the, on the perimeter, so there's no help side there. I think he's trying to adjust it to go high-low or wing entry down into the blocks. So foul was called on Jaden Rose. It was her first. Victoria Mesher will check back in and Carissa Meyer will have a seat for the Redskins. 137 remaining in the first half. I mean, it just tells you how physical the game is. They just run on the side out of bounds in a stack play and the officials had to separate a couple of the girls because they were body checking one another. <laughs> this has been a physical game, no doubt. Sagas for looking to cut inside. Instead, she passes it off. Good job with the show and go there by Albers. Hunt working it around. Sydney DeLong had it momentarily. Now kick out. Hunt, 20 footer, partially blocked. Sure was. Mesher appeared to got her hands on it. Turner running the floor. Stops, pops around the rim and out. Rebound corralled. Mesher has it. Three ball by Turner. No. Hustle play, able to save it. Nice job underneath, saving the possession. Almost like they were a little surprised that they were waiting for a whistle. And they're gonna get over and back on Fort Laramie. You saw the Redskins kind of stop and went, hey, I think, did we save this? Did we actually save they it? They saved it, Mesher got the basketball and she felt like she was too deep under the rim and tried to flip it back out. And that's what coach is telling her, shoot the basketball. Even if it hits the bottom of the rim, we can still maintain possession with it. Yeah. Tough break. Richards passes into Sagister. Now it's Hunt working. 38 seconds remaining in the first half. Three point Tri Village lead. And the ball stolen away, and they're going to call a tip ball, and that's going to stay with Tri Village alternating or staking with the possession. Possession arrow favoring the Patriots. Jaden Rose digging down on there, got her left hand on it, got a deflection, and then tied the basketball up, like you said. Patriots are going to maintain possession, but that's going to play big because if there's no more turnovers, guess who's going to get the ball in the third quarter? Absolutely right. Hunt controlling. Now getting out to Richards. Back to Hunt, 25 seconds. And Sagastert passing it off. Going around the horn. Three ball on the way and long. Fort Laramie with the basketball, nine seconds. Opportunity to go within one or tie here in the first half. Almost losing control of it. Three seconds, driving inside, off the rim, no good. Too high, and that is gonna be the end of the first half. It's halftime here at Butler High School and a 16-13 lead for Tri-Village. We'll be back with third quarter action coming up on WOSN. Halftime activities wrapping up. Our scoreboard is presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs, helping small businesses navigate their financial future. And our free throws, sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Getting ready for the third quarter of this Division IV Vandalia Regional Final. Tri-Village and Fort Laramie. Tri-Village with a 16-13 lead. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here high above center court at Butler High School. And, you know, this has been a defensive game. It's been a turnover-filled game, which has kind of led to the defense. 
Uh, offense, not a whole lot. Only three buckets scored in the entire second quarter between the two teams. But that's not the way the pace has been played either, has it? I mean, it's no. been up and down and try to get the ball inside. And we knew coming in that both of these teams mirrored one another. They do a great job defensively. They do a great job with their feet. They do a great job with their hands. And that's why we're sitting here at 16 to 13. That shows you how much respect both ball clubs have for one another. You know, that's exactly why you've got two teams that are uh, a combined 51 and two on the season. It's why you have uh, so much success. And of course, this is a, a rematch, which I'm sure is not lost on anyone from 2021. Fort Laramie and Tri-Village met up in the regional final last, no, I'm sorry, two years ago, which Fort Laramie won convincingly 61 to 37. Tri-Village trying to get back to state for the first time since 2012 as we get going with third quarter action. and. It's starting very similar to how the second quarter ended. Yep, with a deflection by Black. Oh, there's a nice block. Two nice blocks. Three blocks. A number of blocks, as you said, going up again and drawing the foul there underneath. Nice job there to stay with it and then getting the trip to the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken free throw line. This will be only the second trip to the foul line period in this game. They both belong to Fort Laramie. Yeah, but take a look down on the bench. What a great sight to see. Avery Brandewee sitting down at the end of the bench. She appears to have her left leg wrapped, but it's good to see her back on encouraging her teammates. And out there to support her teammates. Second free throw is up and good. Definitely needed to make free throws. It is down to a one-point lead, 16-15 Tri-Village. First point of the night for Rose. Yeah, that's after her missing two early ones in the first quarter to come back and make two in a row big. Sagaster floater is no good. Back of the way come the Redskins with numbers. And that one poked away. Nice job by Bella Black to knock that one out, but it will stay with Fort Loramie. My goodness, she's got quick hands. 48 steals on the season. Tory Richards, 124. You know, it's really difficult to poke mm. the ball out at that angle and not draw a foul. Absolutely. It's great timing and being real sneaky. Turner from the corner, no good. Sagaster with the rebound. And some <laughs> tight pressure defense there right in the corner played by Mesher. And Mesher is not letting her go. Sagaster having to work, bring the ball all the way up to half court before she gives it to Hunt. Yeah, every handoff for ball screen, nice deflection there. I was gonna say every ball screen or handoff, Fort Laramie is satisfied with switching everything. Both defenses have come to play and it's evident in the score of this contest. Tribe Village came to the game averaging 67 points a game. They only have 16. And unless something really crazy happens, they're not gonna get close to their total. And once again, another turnover, trying to put it over the defense and trying to find that spot. Yeah, coach decided to go big and he brought Hager in. They wanted to go high-low and she threw the ball a little bit too deep and couldn't complete the high-low and it was a turnover, ball back to Fort Larman. Boy, this place will erupt if you're the home side, if they can get a bucket right here. And losing it out of bounds. Had some trouble with the dribble there, so Albert's unable to hang on to it and it will go back to Tri-Village. Yeah, that's what coach just said. You know, you don't want to take the ball down there. That's danger area and that's not where they wanted to go. And she took it down there and as a result, turned it over. Now looking, stops, pops, that shot is short. Rebound, corralled by Mesher. She had a big game on the glass. She absolutely is. Now here's Turner cutting inside. Floater in. Fort Laramie back in front. 17-16. Big bucket right there by Turner. Senior stepping up, 9.9 .9 points a game. That's what they need. Looking underneath, this is Hager working around. Shot can't go. Redskins on the move. Here's Turner up again. Floating shot by Charity Stripe. Bounces in and out. Offensive reboard. Rebound. Corral. Turner again. Off. Fight for the basketball underneath. It's going to be a tip ball and go back to Tri-Village. 
Man, both teams are landed on the line. That's the way it should be. A lot of block shots, a lot of deflections. Bodies sprawling everywhere. That's a tough break right there, this last possession, because Hager got it inside. That's three-point blank she's missed tonight. Yep. And I know it's got to be driving the coach nuts because she was right at the rim. And after a while, those point blank misses start to add up. Yes, they do. And in a game like this, everyone counts. Sagister with the basketball. She's going to step back, foot on the line. It's going to be a long two. Pretty move, though. Indeed. Wow. She was real quiet there in the second quarter. She's got double digits with 10, our first double digit score. I think she had all of her eight points in the first quarter. Fort Laramie did a great job locking her down. No points in the second. And as you mentioned, two points, 10 points total in the contest. And now Fort Laramie looking to set up and run an offense. And intercepted by Morgan Hunt. Nice play by the young lady. Great anticipation on the backside, throwing that skip pass. And she got her hands on it and secured it. That 5'10 frame, stretching up and snatching that ball out of the sky. Something she's done very well so far this season. You call them the Twin Towers, and you got one that's just absolutely physical inside, and you got another one that's really athletic. Tori Richard is knocking that one down. Tri Village with a three point lead, 20 to 17 on the Reese Myring and Company scoreboard. 4.03 remaining halfway through this third quarter. Good answer by Richards right there, getting one in the lane, into the paint area, and knocking it in. Nice ball movement, three ball on the way by Albers, no good. Rebound by Sagister. Long pass looking for Hunt, finds her Hunt up and gets it in. That's a great rim run by that young lady and a better pass over the top of the defense. Nice catch and finish at the rim. And Fort Lorby needs to talk it over. Tri Village with their largest lead of the night, 22 to 17 over Fort Lorby. We'll step away as well and take a timeout. Back after this on WOSN. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and Sydney are free throw sponsors. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Tri Village with a five point lead on the Reese Myring and Company scoreboard. Three and a half remaining in the third quarter. Tri Village with their largest lead of the night, 22 17. And as you were mentioning at the break, Darren, this is not a lead that you want to get any larger for Lorne. And there's the answer. Ava Turner with a triple. That's a big shot. That was a great timeout taken by the Lady Skins, giving them an opportunity to regroup, and they come out and banged in that three. Around the rim, and getting that one to fall is Richards. Yeah, that's two in a row. They let her get into the paint area. We talked during break, Tri-Village with 24, and their, their big three have all 24 points. Here's Turner for another three, no. And rebounded by Tri-Village. Bella Black getting in there, keying the long pass. This is Hunt. Hunt double teamed, loses control of it, and back into the hands of Fort Loramie. Good job walling up right there. Ava Turner forcing that turnover. Summer Hoying got the loose ball, and now Turner. Just be patient, get the ball going side to side and through your high post. Now Turner controlling it, and she will be fouled. Yeah, I think they got blocked with a push. I believe you're right. That's going to be number two on Bella Black. Team second. Measures back in, replacing Summer Hoying. Good minutes by Summer right there. Avery Brandewee for Fort Loramie has a pretty heavily taped up knee, so we're Assuming she is not going to come back into this one, so that's going to be an adjustment that the Redskins are going to have to make uh, on both sides. That shot is off the mark. Right idea, excuse me, just a little bit quick on the release. Brandon, we came into the game averaging nearly 12 points a contest before Lormy, so they're going to have to find those other points if they want to have a chance to come away with a trip to Dayton. 
Free ball on the way, in and out. Oh, and there's a breakout. Here's Rose looking to finish, blocked by Black. And that will send her to the line, and that's going to be the third on Bella Black. Alex Rose buying in to rim running right there. Got a nice pass, drew the foul. Want to get two free throws. Heading to the Lee's famous recipe free throw line. And she made her last two after missing her first two. And misses that one. So far, she's the only player for either side that has had a free throw attempt. It's amazing as physical as the game's been, huh? <laughs> Just thinking that. that. There's been a lot of physical play, a lot of turnovers, steals, block, all that kind of stuff. This is the sixth foul shot in the entire game. Very well officiated game. Credit to these three guys calling this contest tonight. She hits that one. Back to a three-point lead for Tri-Village. Albers back in. All of Rose's three points at the foul line tonight. Final 90 seconds of this third quarter. Patriots looking to extend their lead. Morgan Hunt off balance, shot no good. Taps it back to herself. Shot, rejected. Going back the other way, that says Albers. Right handed in, and it's a one point game. All started with her defensive prowess. Second serve, back the other way, and fouled. Is Black, and she will head to the line. I'm sorry, that was Morgan Hunt who was fouled. And she will head to the line. The Lee's recipe free throw line for the first time of anyone from Tri Village tonight. Yeah, it looked worse than it was. It was one of those where Carissa Messer's trying to get, Meyer, excuse me, is trying to get back on defense. And she just unfortunately ran up the back of Hunt as the ball was coming over her shoulder. Now, Nothing malicious there. Carla Siegel's having a discussion with the official. That was a third uh -oh. foul on Ava Turner. Okay, they went ahead and they changed, they had the wrong person. Okay. On the initial set, it was against uh, number 12. Oh, so that's going to be Carissa Meyer then. Correct. And that foul shot does not go in. And you got to think, you, you didn't want, uh, Turner's going to go ahead and have a seat. Yeah, coming, still, coming in, they're shooting 69.2% at the strike. Morgan Hunt at 56.6 and missed them both. Missed them both. I, I think they still give that foul to Turner. She walked out with three fouls. Meyer has not been assessed any, so we'll see if we can get that clarification as we move forward. Okay. But now in the final minute, it's a Tri-Village one-point lead for Lauren with a chance to take the lead again, and they do. Oh, big, big bucket right there. I believe that was uh, Meyer, wasn't it, with the split? Yep, five points for Meyer, and it's a one-point Fort Loramie lead. Sagister drives and kicks. Now she has the basketball back, 35 seconds to go in the third. Looking underneath for Hager. Hager harassed underneath, and would they get the tie they get up? a hold? I think they got a hold. They did. So a foul assessed to Fort Loramie. I think you're right, partner. I think it's going to be Mesher. It is. You know, you made a great point. They've got to find some other point production. If you're Fort Laramie, and right now they're getting that from Meyer, she's coming in averaging four points a game and has five already. You're going to say, well, that's only one point over her average. She's made a big basket and kept these ladies in this ball game. Yeah, she absolutely has. And here's a three-pointer on the way by Tri-Village. No, that's no good. Shot does not go for Height Camp. I'm sorry for the Sydney DeLong. Yeah, this is a big possession right here at the end of the quarter. If Lormy can come away with some points, tight defense by Richards. He gets it away. Three seconds. Looking long. Going to have to put it up with timeout, and that one does not go. Final quarter on the way for Lormy with a one-point lead over Tri-Village. We'll be back after this on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight presented by Reese Myring and Company CPAs helping small businesses navigate their financial future. 
Final eight minutes from Vandalia Butler High School, the Division IV Vandalia Regional Final. Tri Village and Fort Loramie. Redskins with a one point lead. Patrick Hamler, Darren Gilbert here with you, and it is only going to get more intense as we get to the end of this one, partner. I'd have loved to have been one of the coaches sitting in listening to the Fort Loramie right there during intermission. You let one of the other two girls who haven't scored open for a jumper and try to slow down the big three and keep the basketball out of their hands. It's going to be interesting. Last 7.45 here, partner. Mesher shot off balance. Corralled here is Sagaster and drawn contact. And I think this has been every time we've seen her drive to the basket, she does that, that scoop shot. Like she goes up underneath and that she's seems to be really how she good. attacks the basket. Yeah, right. she's really good at it. Coming in at 78% or uh, Richards 70.3 and Hager, believe it or not, is an 83.6 free throw shooter. At the Lee's, Lee's Recipe free throw line and Sagister missing her first. Another opportunity here to tie this one at 25 and she does. Again, Tri-Village and the Lady Patriots are satisfied going into that 2-3 zone and staying big. This gives an opportunity for the smaller Fort Army team, if they can rebound the ball, to make it a track meet, make it a full court game. Sagaster, Hunt, and Richards, as you've mentioned or alluded to, Darren, have all of Tri-Village's points. And really, Sagaster has been held down, averaging about 21 points a game, a little over that, only has 11, and you think, you know, if you could do that, you got to feel really good about your chances. And that one around the rim, down, and then out. And the basketball corralled by Fort Loramie. Looking for it, and Carlos Siegel gets the timeout. I'll tell you, what a heady basketball play by Ava Turner. Tough break, missing the little floater along the baseline, but she stayed with it, got on the floor, and was very high basketball IQ, called a timeout. 30-second timeout, we'll keep it here. And reset the contest for you. It's all tied up at 25 between Tri-Village and Fort Loramie. Of course, one of the big storylines, Avery Brandewey going out early with an injury. She was the leading scorer for Fort Loramie, averaging almost 12 points a game. Went out with a knee injury, will not return. She's got it pretty heavily wrapped. So uh, if they do advance beyond tonight, there are questions concerning what she will she be able to go for state championship basketball in Dayton coming up later this week. As I just mentioned, Tri-Village has all of their points from their top three scores. And can they get anyone else involved in the offense? You almost feel like someone else is going to have to score somebody and step up for them to win this have, game. Yeah, exactly. You know, somebody's going to have to step up that, you know, doesn't shoot the basketball a lot or hasn't made the big play. Turner for three. No, that one is long. And Fort Loramie having to answer some of the same questions with Brandewee being out. They're going to have to get scoring. And so far, Turner only having four points. So she's well below her average. Victoria Mesher only with two points. So there's, there's some opportunities there for uh, the Redskins to get some additional points. Are they going to be able to do it? And you just saw right there, Hager did not want to shoot that basketball. And I think that comes down to the confidence level of the first three quarters. Without a doubt, she just put that one up, and they just have been off the mark, and then Hager is called for a foul. That is going to be her third. And we got to remember, partner, that girl is a freshman playing in the big stage. Yes. And, you know, the jitters could have play a big part in this. Yep. But she's going to learn from this experience. She's got the body, and she looks to Pierce to pass the ball very well out of the post. She's going to have a heck of a career. Hager's put in a lot of minutes for Tri-Village this season. She's a freshman. This shot is long. Does not go by Hoink. She's a freshman. Uh, Sydney DeLong is a freshman. I mentioned Hager. Uh, so there's been some youth on this, this Tri-Village run. Well, yeah, yeah, well, yeah both clubs, absolutely. Absolutely, that's right. Driving inside, off balance in. Hager puts that shot, that one off balance. Might have been partially deflected. And now here come the Redskins. Had a brief three on two break around the rim. Turner can't get it to go. Rebound by Black. Tough break right there because they had the breakout, just couldn't finish. A lot of credit goes to Tri-Village and their defensive prowess right there. One and done. If you like defensive battles, you have come to the right place on WOSN tonight. This has been a defensive clinic. Yeah, both, both coaches have got these girls well schooled. 
We're going to have a foul. Uh, we're going to have a timeout, I believe. They did. Yep, that's what it was, okay. partner. Good call. So they will get the timeout. I heard him yell timeout. I guess it's a little bit of a cheat. That's okay. <laughs> we'll step away and take a timeout as well. All nodded at 25 here on WOSN. Our free throws are sponsored by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Piqua and Sydney. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Coming off the timeout, five minutes and 12 seconds remaining. All tied up at 25. There's a regional final between Tri-Village and Fort Laramie. Patriots with the basketball. And now you have to wonder, with us starting to get down to the nitty gritty in terms of time in this contest, will we see more set plays? Here's Sagister, pop back three is no good. Heger, not the last to touch it, so we'll stay down with the Patriots. You have to wonder if we'll see more set plays, if we'll see more set offense, or if both teams are going to be pretty content to keep up and down the court until maybe until about a minute left. Well, I think if you're, you know, if you're Tri Village right now, you'd like to get the ball into the the uh, Hager girl in the post, but she's had such a difficult time putting it in. You may have to rely on your other big three. There's Hager on Hager the rebound. Hager again, that one. And I think they got her with the push. I believe you're right. Well, yeah. So they will assess that. Yeah, she's coming to in. Hager, yes. Averaging 8.3 points a game and six rebounds. 38 block shots, and she's just been nullified in any part of her game tonight. That's her fourth foul. So definitely something to be aware of. So that takes a lot of that size they had in the paint that might have been, that has been, I think, causing Fort Laramie a lot of problems. Morgan Hunt is still in there. She's done a terrific job. The, but This is a better matchup for Fort Laramie. Yeah, absolutely. The only disadvantage is now you're going to play to attract meat by both ball clubs. Yep. And can the Skins capitalize? Three ball on the way. No. Good look, though. Yeah. Albers couldn't get it to go. Now Sagister breaking the double team. Sagister from way downtown and knocks it down. That was volleyball line. If, hey, you know, if she hits it, I guess you let her shoot it. Three-point lead for Tri-Village. Yeah, the only people that are shocked are the ones that's never seen her play because... <laughs> She just pulled it without any reservation or hesitation. Turner driving inside, blocked from behind, and then blocked again, and they're going to call Morgan Hunt on the foul. That's going to be her first, and just as an impartial observer up here, I thought maybe the foul took place before that. I would like to know how many double-doubles she's had in points and block shots. Uh, without a doubt. Because she's had at least a handful, if not more, today on block shots. At the Lee's Recipe Chicken free throw line and missing the first. Yeah, that's a tough one, Eric, because she's coming in. She hasn't had many attempts, 26 on the year, but at 73% clip. See if, we, if she can't split these here. Meyer trying to get the second one. And missing it, corralled by Tri-Village. One more, and Fort Lormie will be in the bonus, so Opportunities could abound for them to shoot foul shots, so they're going to have to start making them if they want to win this contest. Sagister looking underneath, and the foul. And I think that might be on Turner. We'll see what the official says. That's Turner was I'm nearby. Wondering. Yeah, I think she got her on the reach around. They did, so that's going to be the fourth. I'm sorry, the third on Turner. Okay, so we were talking about that earlier. They did move that foul over to Carissa Meyer that we were talking about near the end of the third quarter. So that is now the third on Ava okay. Turner. All right, good. Good eye. Because I'd have never caught that one. Sagister keys it in. And Sagister gets it back. Good job by Jade Rose right there, containing the basketball. Playing really tight on her now. For sheer pull the trigger, she just did again. Sagister from downtown, nails it again. Largest lead of the night for Tri-Village. Sagister with 17 points. 
does that tell you how confident she is? She, had, she didn't show anybody up. She just showed three fingers beside her hip coming down the floor. Somewhere Steph Curry's going, calm down, girl. Nice move. There's a nice answer by Ava Turner, and that cuts it back to a four-point lead, 31-27. Between two and 30 feet. That's Riley Sagister's range. Yes. Here. Oh, she's earned her points tonight. There's no question. Yeah, without a doubt. Still the same three players for Tri Village have all of their points. And a timeout called by head coach Brad Gray. 2.24 remaining in this one, the Patriots with a four point lead. Can they hang on to it? We'll find out next on WOSN. Welcome back, 224 remaining. Patriot basketball. Four point lead for oh, Tri-Village and a steal. Running the floor, Turner around the rim and in. Two point game. All started with the prowess of the defensive end with the quick hands by Turner and the swipe and the full court layup. Under two minutes. Two point lead for Tri Village on the Reese Myron Company scoreboard. Yeah, this is where you got to pick your spot on who do you foul. Hunt inside, shot block. partially blocked. Going the other way, into the hands of Mesher, now back. I thought she was going to pull it, didn't you? I thought so. Meyer controlling it, then now Jaden Rose handling it. Let's see what they decide to do here. For the lead, Ava Turner's shot is off. Rebound, picked up, nice block by Morgan Hunt, and a tie up, and this will go with the jump ball, and it is, it's going to go to Tri-Village. You know, the thing about Hunt, when she blocks shots, it's not only with the right hand, she uses that opposite hand so she doesn't get called for body fouls. Yeah. That was a heck of a play. This is where you don't want to give the breakout in the full court layup here. If you're Fort Larmy, there you go, they're going to adjust. You see a little bit, a little bit of a press. A board of a half court. There we see the half court trap. Sagister gets around it. You're going to see the defense tighten up. Fort Lormy with two fouls to give. Yeah, this is where your assistant coaches play a huge part in finding out who you need to foul. I think we got a timeout, don't we? Yeah, we do. We got a timeout. Patriots calling the timeout. 58.3 seconds. Remaining. Well, hey, do you enjoy games like this one? I know we are. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> are, are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Well, if you are, please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. Donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. So you pull up your phone, go to WTLW.com slash donate. And you don't even have to leave the couch while you're watching the game. You can do that and then get right back here to watch uh, this contest as we come up on the final 58 seconds of this one. And it's Tri-Village basketball, two-point lead. How do, how do you approach it? Well, here's the unique thing. Fort Laramie burned those three timeouts, remember? She burned one early in the game. She has played, what, the second half? Maybe if you use one timeout, mm -hmm. maybe not any. And now you're looking at Tri-Village only has one left where Fort Laramie has two. How is this going to play out? This is where your assistant coaches play a huge part in communicating with the girls on who to foul and not to foul. If you don't get the steal, you got to put them at the charity stripe, put somebody that you, you think feels uncomfortable or hasn't shot it tonight. And like you said, we haven't seen many free throws. So even a high percentage shooter could miss one. And you're right. Hager's back in the game. She comes in 83% from the charity stripe this season. So, and there's the there's steal. The steal. Just what Fort Army needed. Can they tie? Turner to the rack. No good. And tied up again. And if it's a jump ball, it will go to Fort Army, and it will. She wanted the timeout. Albers tried. 
Good play there by Riley for Tri Village to tie it up. I don't know if either side is really going to get a chance to run a set off. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think because the pressure is just so insurmountable right Inside, now. Inside, drawing the contact, and that will send her to the line. Victoria Mesher with a chance to tie this one up. To the Lee's oh famous recipe boy. free throw line. Okay, it's on Black, but that's her fourth. So, absolutely, yeah. So, Black with four, Hager with four. So, interesting. Well, they would stay in there because they're going to be on offense next. And missing the first one. Yeah, Mesher coming in at 71%. One of the better free throw shooters on the ball club. But she's really given it defensively. It just makes you wonder how much leg she's lost. Yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. And Carla Siegel's going to take one of her remaining two timeouts. It's a one-point game here at Vandalia Butler High School. We'll take the timeout as well. 43.8 remaining. We'll be back here on WOSN. Fort Laramie crowd shaking the rafters. Their team down by one, 43.8 remaining in the fourth quarter. Tri-Village with a 31 to 30 lead and the Patriots have the basketball. Keep the basketball in front of you, pick your spot. If you don't get it, you gotta foul. Anybody but obviously Sagister. You've committed, you've been able to force so many turnovers, you don't need to necessarily foul. Oh, they may get a 10. They, 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 did. they did, they got the 10 second call. They got a 10 count first. Now the referees are going to talk it over at midcourt. So did they get? No, they got a them. timeout. Patriots calling the timeout before the 10 seconds. They're done, though. That's more importantly. They are out of timeouts. That is absolutely right. So they do get the timeout, preserving the possession and keeping the ball away from Fort Lormie at least for a little bit of time. So final. Seconds ticking away in this one. Check out our website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. No one covers regional weeks, district weeks, sectional weeks, heck, any week, like WOSN, WTLW. Going to be a bunch this week, huh? Yep, we're going to be at, but, uh, at the Stroh Center. At Bowling Green, we're going to have a lot of teams competing in there. Depending on how Fort Loramie does, we'll be, that'll be one of the teams that we cover at uh, the state tournament for girls basketball coming up this week at the University of Dayton Arena. And I'll tell you what, you know, UD Arena is only a, a quick shot down the road, but I'll tell you what, for these two teams, it is going to be a longer trip you know than what? most. <laughs> as much as I like Ohio State and the, and the university down there and the shot, it just seems a little bit more friendly environment as far as people when you play in Dayton. UD Arena has so far been a really fun place. Here we go, Thir final 30 seconds. The trap, able to pass out of it. With a numbers the, advantage, now they get it to Hager. Oh, there's the one. And now Hunt, they're gonna go ahead That's and foul. That's the one. She's been there tonight at the free throw line. But she's at 57%, 56.6. And that will not be a foul or okay. shooting yet because they had one okay. more foul to give. This is where you've got to really double team the best player and try to get it in the hands of somebody on the stat sheet that doesn't shoot it real well. So they're going to get Hunt again. So now Fort Lormie out of fouls to give. So from here on out, both teams will be shooting a one and one in non-shooting situations non-shooting fouls to be more specific. Again, you want to put the free throw situation in Hunt, Black, or DeLong's hands if you're Fort Laramie. If you want to roll the dice and play the odds. And to Hager's hands. And the foul will be committed by Skylar Albert. That's her first. Wow, what a big moment for a freshman. Yeah. And she's uh, getting coached up a little bit by Morgan Hunt. <laughs> You saw the 5'10 senior put her arm around her and go, come on, let's go, you got this. Yep. At the Lee's famous recipe free throw line, shooting the front end of a one and one. 
Biggest free throw of the season so far for Tri-Village. Missed it. Back the other way comes Fort Loramie. Albers leading the attack, 10 seconds. Stops, pops, misses. Rebound underneath, Rose. Opportunity for Hager. Hager with the rebound, and she is fouled. Struggling offensively the whole game, and she comes up with maybe the biggest rebound of the night. Yeah, Coach Laramie would like to, you know, Carla, she just wanted to get the basketball on the mess free throw and just go with it because she burns that timeout. She's going to allow Tri Village to set their defense. They yeah, had a without look. a doubt. They had a good look. Actually, two looks. One and one coming up at the Lee's famous recipe free throw line for Kennedy Hager. And she hits it. Boy, look at the weight that just fell off her shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Yep. You know, she's had a struggle tonight, and that's the biggest one of her young career to knock that one in. Fort She'll Lord forget me. about those missed layups. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, hitting the free throws and all those missed layups just kind of melt away. 32-30, Tri Village on top of Fort Loramie, and we'll keep it here. One free throw coming up for Kennedy Hager and Tri Village. So there's there's limited things that you can do now. You've used your last time out if you're Carly Siegel. Obviously, if it's a miss on the foul line, I mean, you gotta, you got 2.9 seconds, you gotta, you got to throw it up. And yes. you got to think, in any scenario, you're looking at a long pass, a long basket, something crazy is going to have to happen here okay, before Army. Well, what happens if Tri-Village knocks the free throw in and then decides to foul? Right. Now you're putting... Fort Laramie on the line for two free throws, but two free throws is still going to leave you one point short. Right. So you think their play then, if they make the first one. Some coaches like to do that. Some coaches won't. Some coaches will just stand back. But I've also seen players make them from half court and beyond, too, you know, and yeah. just stand back and not do anything. So it's going to be interesting to see what type of strategy both coaches use right here. Yeah. I, you know, I stopped for gas uh, near Pickwell on the way down here, and I think Riley Sagister hit a three-pointer from there earlier on in the contest. <laughs> so, you know, range is is is, uh, is one of those things, and, and Sagister is the only one who's who's shown us that. But I thought you were going to say while you're eating lunch at Lee's famous, famous <laughs> recipe chicken. I, I think there's a the Lee's in Sydney and Pickwell. You know, Sagister might have hit a shot from there too. Okay. I really don't know. Here we go. That's entirely possible. Hager's second foul shot, no good. Time running down. Got to put it up. Got to put it up. Free oh, ball. Oh, oh in and out. Oh Almost goodness. had it. And the Patriots are going to Dayton. Are you kidding me? That thing was halfway down. <laughs> Tri Village hangs on for the 32 30 win. One person besides the big three scored a basket in this contest, and that was Kennedy Hager with one point, the free throw. Tri Village is moving on to Dayton. They are your Vandalia regional champions in 2023. Fort Loramie ending a tremendous season at 24 and 3. What a great high school basketball game. What a great high school environment. Two teams that just absolutely gutted it out for 32 minutes. It's a shame one team's got to go home because they're both deserving after the season they've had. You know, Tri-Village made that one extra play. You know, I'm happy for the freshman, you know. Yep. Didn't play really well, very well shooting the basketball, but she stayed with it hit the biggest free throw of her career for her, not only herself, but of her team and her community. And she's going to advance them to the Final Four. But I'm telling you what, that shot and the effort that Fort Laramie had, I've watched them and had them this year. And man, what a gutsy effort by them girls. They, you know, Coach got playing time and got great minutes from girls, uncharacteristically, that didn't get to see a lot of time. Ariel Heitkamp. You know, only played four games this year, come in and give solid minutes. Any girl that put and stepped on the floor for Fort Laramie, you know, gave everything they had. And it's too bad about Avery. And, you know, I wish her the best. I hope things come back clean on her knee because uh, she's got a bright future in front of her. And the nice thing about both ball clubs, 
they only have three seniors. Yeah, uh, we're going to do this again. Both both these teams are going to be back. I think Fort Laramie is going to be back. I mean, your your leading scorer is a sophomore, and again, hopefully that knee is is nothing is nothing significant, but you know, able to come back and just have a a tremendous season. But this this night, this contest belongs to Tri Village, the Patriots. Picking up the 32 to 30 win over Fort Lormie. A terrific season as the Patriots gonna cut down the Nets. That is gonna do it for us here of our coverage of this contest. Thank you so much for watching. Once again, the final here, Tri Village, your division four Vandalia regional champions, 32 to 30 over Fort Lormie. For Darren Gilbert and our entire WOSN staff, I'm Patrick Hamler saying so long from Butler High School.